Father God, the song that we just sang is a sentiment of our heart. We want to seek you. We want you to mold us. As we linger a little longer in your presence, may your spirit guide us in our meditations, so I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Let me read the next verse also. To him be the glory in the church, in Jesus Christ, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. In a Christian walk, every brand new day is unknown and uncertain. For the last 40 days, uh, a good number of our members have been involved in this prayer and fasting, preparing for the second coming. A very beautiful book written by Dennis Smith, focusing in as to how every one of us as individuals, as members of the Remnant Church, should be preparing our hearts to receive the latter rain. But in our journey on this sin sick world, because of the concerns and the anxieties, the burdens, the worries that we face in life. Sometimes it is so challenging to really stand back, pause, wait on the Lord. I don't want to belittle the challenges that you and I face as Christians in the sin sick world. We struggle every day. We wrestle within ourselves as to how we can come a step closer to God in emulating God's character. Apostle Paul very beautifully put it when he wrote to the church at Ephesus. He had said in Ephesians chapter 16, verse 12, he says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness that prevails in high places. That's the kind of battle that you and I face. This morning, this afternoon rather, as we have spent a little time talking about the importance of prayer, as we listen to these various testimonies, it is my prayer that somehow each, each one of us would be energized, motivated, that you would have a greater zeal and enthusiasm and a passion to make prayer as a very important aspect of your Christian life. I'm not saying that you are not praying, but make it more persistent. Make it more relevant to your time. Because I want you to know that the struggles that you and I face is not only confined to a physical world, but it is also confined to a spiritual world. In this cosmic battle, I want you to keep in mind that you are the center of the cosmic battle between good and evil, between God and Satan. Your heart becomes the place where the battle is being fought, where you got to make the right decision either for God or for Satan. I want you to know that the world that we need to live in is such that prayer becomes very urgent and very desperate. Recently, I was reading a little book and talked about a survey that was taken in one of the best schools in Massachusetts called the Newton High School. In fact, 80% of them make it to the, the most prestigious colleges in the, in, the, in the United States of America. And so they offered a course, Bible as a Literature. Nothing to do with religion, just treat Bible as a literature. And at the end of the course, a test was given. And these small students had these answers to give. Sodom and Gomorrah are lovers. Jezebel was Ahab's donkey. Eve was created from an apple. Jesus was baptized by Moses. That's the kind of interest, that's the kind of passion that they have for God's word. In a land that is filled with churches and chapels, in a land that is filled with temples and tabernacles, a land that has sent out the most number of missionaries to the rest of the world, what a tragedy that God, God's word, God's commandment is going down the drain. There is no love for God, there is no love for God's word. That's the kind of world that you and I live in. That's the kind of nation that you and I live in. And as such, prayer becomes very relevant and very desperate, my friends. Chuck Spindall, in, his, in one of his books, Come Before Winter, talks about a survey that was taken in the modern 
seminaries of this country where future pastors are being trained. And I was shocked to see the result of the survey that was taken. 50%, 54% of these graduates, to be graduates, to, be become, to become pastors, do not believe in a physical resurrection. 56% of the people that surveyed among the seminaries do not believe in the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. 71% of future pastors of this country, of various denominations, do not believe in literal heaven or hell. 89% of the people to, be, to, to become the future pastors, the book goes on to say, do not believe in the deity of Christ. They do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as God. And what is shocking, my friends, 99% of the people who are going to be preaching from the pulpit do not believe in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the kind of world that you and I live in. The reason why I'm bringing this, this information, my friends, is to wake up from your spiritual slumber, to somehow energize you to realize that you're living the worst of times and demands the best of time on your knees, seeking the Lord. Because if you are not careful, in a very subtle way, you will also fall through the cracks. Dennis Smith in his book that all of us, some of us went through, he pinpoints two reasons why the Lord is delaying his coming. Number one, he says, God's people are not ready. What a personal message that I need to take to myself. What a personal message that you and I need to take. He says one reason why God is delaying his coming is because we as God's children are not prepared. And then he goes on to say the second reason is this, that we as God's children, part of the remnant church of this great movement all around the world, have not completed the task of preaching the three ends message. 